Hey, and welcome to TV Central, the show that keeps you in the know about all things TV. On today's episode, we're taking a look at TV shows with humble paperback beginnings. It's not just movies that are finding their plot lines between the pages of bestsellers, TV shows are doing it too. While the phenomenon has been around for longer than you'd think, these days it seems like books are the only place Hollywood is finding inspiration. Little House on the Prairie wasn't just about pioneers, it was also a pioneer itself. As one of the first TV shows based on a book, it not only brought to life the beloved characters created by Laura Ingalls Wilder, but it ran for nine seasons, proving that turning books into TV shows could be a very lucrative endeavor. I buried another one day. There was nobody we knew. Nowadays, the phenomenon has definitely taken off. In fact, you'd be surprised to know just how many TV shows were introduced as books first. Game of Thrones is an obvious one, as the books are now just as famous as the show. It all began in 1996, when George R. R. Martin published A Game of Thrones, the first novel of a series titled A Song of Ice and Fire. Over the next 10 years, he added three more books to the series, A Clash of Kings, A Storm of Swords, and A Feast for Crows. It wasn't until late 2009 that a pilot episode was produced based on the series, and in March 2010, a series commitment was made for nine further episodes. When the series premiered in April 2011, it was met with rave reviews and critical acclaim. With the conclusion of the first season came 13 Emmy nominations, including Outstanding Drama Series and Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Drama Series for Peter Dinklage. Needless to say, it was picked up by HBO for a second season and is now in its third season with a fourth on the way. George R.R. R. Martin is still writing books for the series, so there's no telling when the show will come to an end. Notorious for showing no mercy to its characters, the show, as well as the books, has no problem killing off audience favors, favorites, no matter how loved they are. And speaking of gore and death, let's move on to another killer TV show, Dexter. Dex, thank God you're here. If you were to read Jeff Lindsay's Darkly Dreaming Dexter, published in 2004, you'd be able to give a play-by-play -play of the entire first season of Showtime's Dexter without ever watching an episode. But that's not to say that the show isn't worth watching. Premiering a short two years after the original book was published, and who also leads a secret life as a serial killer. While he doesn't claim to have a conscience, he still wins the audience over with his code. The only people he kills are criminals who have slipped through the cracks of justice. The series lasted eight seasons and only concluded a few months ago on September 22, 2013. The series finale drew 2.8 million viewers, which happened to be the largest overall audience in Showtime's history. While we're on the topic of blood, I might as well mention the two big hits, Vampire Diaries and True Blood. Vampire Diaries is a show about, you guessed it, vampires. And yes, they keep diaries. It's based on LJ Smith's young adult book series of the same name and centers on Elena Gilbert, a young high school girl who finds herself torn between two vampire brothers, Stefan and Damon Salvatore. While the basics like character names and some storylines are similar, Kevin Williamson and Julie Pleck, the show's developers, decided to deviate quite a bit on a number of integral points to sort of make the show their own. For starters, Elena is a bit more of a to use a nicer word, princess, in the books, and sports a blonde hairdo rather than the brown locks actress Nina Dobrev brings to the character. Five seasons in, and it's still going strong. Not only that, but it's gone so far as spawning a whole new series, the originals, dedicated to a few characters that fans have grown to love. Something bad is about to happen. Trust me, you have nothing to worry about. A human looks better on you than I would have thought, Catherine. You think something's very wrong, don't you? The show is known for its sizzling hot men, independent and salacious female characters, and a whole lot of doppelganger plot twists. For a bit more of a darker vampiric story, there's True Blood. This wildly popular TV series is based on a book series known as the Southern Vampire Mysteries, 
or the Suki Stackhouse novels by Charlene Harris. The books were first published beginning in 2001, but it wasn't until 2008 that they came to life on the small screen. Anna Paquin plays the main character, Suki Stackhouse, a telepathic waitress and vampire sympathizer. In the fictional world depicted in True Blood, humans know about the existence of vampires and everybody's just trying to get along. In the first few seasons, Suki Stackhouse manages to get along famously, if you know what I mean, with Bill Compton, a vampire whose life she saves in the first episode of the series. With six seasons under its belt and a seventh coming in 2014, True Blood is still doing exceptionally well. One fictional character that everyone knows from his books is the illustrious Sherlock Holmes. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's brilliant character hasn't just inspired one show, but many. BBC's Sherlock, the CBS hit Elementary, and Canada's own Murdoch Mysteries are all based, however loosely, on the famous detective and his exciting adventures. James Moriarty, the most dangerous criminal mind the world has ever seen. Stop it now! From now on, you will stay out of this. Oh, will I? There is nothing wrong with me. Do you understand? You're gonna die. That's what people do. New to the small screen this year are two more TV shows inspired by big name books. Stephen King's Under the Dome came to life earlier this year with the help of screenwriter Brian K. Vaughan. It premiered on CBS in June and, like the book, depicts the story of a small fictional town in the United States that is suddenly cut off from the rest of civilization when an invisible and mysterious force field descends upon it, trapping residents inside. The trapped townsfolk are forced to uncover the secrets and purpose of the dome and its origins, while also unintentionally discovering the secrets of those all around them. With one season down, the second season is set to air sometime in the new year. Another new show this year is NBC's Dracula, which premiered not too long ago on October 25th, 2013. The series was created by Cole Hayden and is a reimagining of the classic Dracula novel by Bram Stoker. The show scores points right off the bat for casting Jonathan Rhys Myers as the title character. After reigning for four seasons on the Tudors, it's about time that gorgeous face entered living rooms again. Of course, now he's an ancient vampire who's hoping to take revenge on the people who ruined his life centuries earlier. Not exactly the kind of guy you should bring home to meet the family. The show is getting mixed reviews despite its sexy star, so it may not last as long as die-hard Johnny fans would hope. But only time will tell. If you set aside Dracula, which, in fairness, isn't holding too closely to the original story, for the most part, it seems that if you take a best-selling book and turn it into a TV show, you're guaranteed at least a few seasons and a loyal fan base. Just look at Gossip Girl, Pretty Little Liars, The Secret Circle, The Walking Dead, and Boardwalk Empire for more examples. I mean, if it works, it works. As an avid reader and aspiring novelist myself, I have to say I'm pretty okay with this phenomenon. I like the idea of seeing some of my favorite characters come to life and exist even after I finish reading the book. And there's so many great books out there that could still get this treatment. If done right, who knows how many more fantastic TV shows could come from this. That's it for today's episode of TV Central. Be sure to tune in to CIB24.com for weekly videos. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.